Hey guys, every other end-to-end -end UI testing tool has got some kind of record and playback mechanism, isn't it? Now, does Cypress has record and playback feature? Well, with version 6.3, Cypress released a feature called as Cypress Studio. Now, it allows you to create a test script by opening the Cypress Runner window and interacting with your application. Cypress Studio is still in experimental mode and to enable it, you have to add experimental studio property in your cypress.json file okay so this is the code guys so you have to open cypress.json you have to add experimental studio and the value of that has to be set to true okay now you can either guys create a brand new test case okay or add steps to existing test cases okay so let's get started so I have created this spec file and I've added two described blocks. Now I've added an it block, okay, in here. So guys, we have two commands in this test case and I want to extend this test case. I want to add more steps to this test cases from Cypress Studio. And I have kept this second described block empty because I want to generate the complete test case from Cypress Studio. Make sense? All right, so let's run this spec. So I'm going to click on Cypress Studio spec.js file. All right. So you should now see a Cypress Studio icon in your test runner. And at first, you might not even notice it because the icon only appears when you hover over the suite or test name. Okay, so let's hover over. This is my suite name. So you could see when you hover over the suite name, right? It gives you the ability to add a new test case altogether. And when you hover over your test case, it gives you the ability to add new steps to this test case so that you can extend it further. Okay. So once you click the icon, the test runner will enter a recording mode and you can start interacting with your app. So let's click on this. Okay, so now you could see in here, studio commands, interact with your site to add test command. All right, so this is blinking, meaning we are now going to record the user actions, but what all actions are being covered? So let's click on this available command, guys. So these are the only commands supported in 8.2 version of Cypress because this is the current version as I'm recording this video. So let's give this a try on this particular web page. Okay. Guys, remember Cypress will automatically execute all hooks and currently present test code and then the test can be extended from that point onwards. Okay. So I'm just going to click in here and guys, you see the command is added in here now let us enter something in this we say QA box let's test okay so that's a type operation then I can also perform the click on the button I can also check these check boxes okay and let us also add this button now okay all right so we have performed some basic operations and all the commands are being added in here. So guys, now if you have accidentally added some action, okay, that's unintended action. So you can remove it by clicking on these cross icons, okay, and the step would get deleted. So once you are done with the steps, you can save your command right inside your test files. Okay. The steps you are created are bind, bounded by comments in the file. So you can clearly differ between what was generated and your own code. Okay. But before we do so, right, starting Cypress 8.2 version, you can also generate assertions by right clicking on element that you would like to assert on. Okay. So I just select this guys. Okay and do a right click and I say, okay, add assertion, have text, this value, okay? Now the assertion is also being added. So let's save it. So I save this command and this is the immediate verification. So it is going to run your test again and going to show you the results, okay? 
So now we go back to our test file. All right. And uh, this is what I was talking about. Okay. So you can clearly see that this is the code being generated by Cypress Studio. And this was my own code. Okay. So guys, the next concept is on what basis Cypress is generating these selectors. Does we have any selectors preference? Yes, guys, we have a preference. And for that, you have to open this documentation. Okay. And this is the default select priority. Can I override this? Yes, you can if you want to. Okay. But I recommend to go for this. Okay. But if you really want to, then you can set the selector priority to favor IDs, then class, then attribute. Then guys, this is the code that you have to write in support index.js file. So you open index.js file and at the end, you can write it like this. Okay. So this is going to override the default Cypress Studio selectors preference. Okay. All right. So next that we have to do is we have to generate a fresh new test case, isn't it? And for now, let's do one thing. Let us set this to skip. Okay. So we are done with this. So what do you have to do to create a brand new test case? You have to hover over the test suite name. Okay. Like so. So you click on this, enter the URL, you click on go. So we are going to click on this drop down. Okay. And let us select an option, option one. All right, so select command is also being fired and guys as usual once you are done with it you have to click on save command and now you have to provide in the name okay so we say select drop down test okay you click on the save test and as usual this case would be executed first all right and now if we go back and check out the code in here so again you have these comments so now this time test created with Cypress Studio. Okay. So guys, uh, I see this feature as a complete game changer if enhanced further. Now Cypress is becoming really popular even in QA community now. However, you know, it has a steep learning curve for software testers. The reason I believe and it's my personal opinion is that testers are always being asked to test applications from users perspective. They've never encouraged and asked to learn about CSS, jQuery, XHR request, events, listeners, etc. Well, certainly the time has changed and QA community is gaining knowledge in each of these mentioned technologies and to some extent the best in class documentation by Cypress and JavaScript and MDN has definitely eased this journey of learning Cypress. Now to further increase the adoption of Cypress in the QA community, I see this Cypress Studio as a complete game changer. And if Cypress team ever uh, watch this video, it would be too awesome guys if we can add the following in Cypress Studio. Number one, handling element interaction inside iframe and shadow DOM. Number two, capture drag and drop, non-select drop down pagination, open new window or tab, file upload, download, etc. Number three, intercept and await XHR request by a right click option, just like we added assertion to a web element in Cypress version 8.2. Number four, record session information and have the ability to load it in following sessions. To be honest, I'm sure it is not going to be that straightforward, more so when we use external plugins to enhance Cypress features. Now guys, commands offered by those plugins are uh, since not the native Cypress command and hence it would be interesting to see how those can be captured in recording if Cypress decides to implement some of these things. Now guys, having said that, this record and playback is meant for those brave people who want to start with test automation. Trying to record test flows will never be enough to completely generate a fully working test automation script. With a generated script, you are just scratching the surface of what's happening in your application. It might be good for POC, okay, but in real project, it's not enough. Okay. So 
that's about Cypress Studio guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.